Hello everyone, today we'll be looking at Democracy 4. By the time this video goes up, this uh, should have entered early access. So I'm excited to be able to bring you a little bit of gameplay about this in case you're interested in the game. I just did a series on Democracy 3, playing as the United States, so we'll basically just pick up as the United States once again. You can see they already have five countries in place, with uh, three more, it looks like, on the way. So it's early access, I expect that things will be developing as, as the early access progresses. And not only that, but we can expect that if we encounter any bugs, these things will be fixed in time. Playing as the United States, uh, we'll just pick any old things at random. We're playing against the Dominion, and well, we're only playing with two parties, but the future Democrats would be the third party, apparently. Uh, leaving everything just completely on the defaults, which means, unfortunately, inheriting quite a lot of debt and being, uh, you know, a tycoon, a lover of tycoon and management games, I will definitely be trying to get us out of debt as quickly as possible. But they have made it a bigger challenge in Democracy 3 than it was in Democracy, I mean in Democracy 4 than it was in Democracy 3, that's for sure. So this is the main screen, the, the screen that you'll be looking at for almost all of the game. Every one of these is a policy or I guess there's policies and there's a, like properties of your nation. So we have crime over here and all the different red and green lines going towards it or away from it. Um, if it's going towards it, that's something which affects crime. And if it's going from crime to something else, that's something which crime affects. As you can imagine, well, actually this is not necessarily clear, but green means it has a, a positive effect on it. And that means that you don't want green if it's going towards crime, because you don't want for, you know, in the bottom right over here we see unemployment, and it has a green arrow going over to crime. And that's not good because we don't want crime to go up. So you just have to pay attention to is the effect that you want positive or negative, and then know whether or not you want the green or the red. So for something like crime, we obviously want red going towards it. And uh, th the game is just about managing all the different sliders for all the different policies. It's changed a little bit since Democracy 3 in that now, instead of just having a fixed cost to raise any amount, or having a fixed cost to lower any amount, um, it's now incremental. Which is quite nice. Because uh, previously, this would like even more... I still think that the game um, incentivizes... Incentivizes... Ah... Yeah, incentivize is uh, basically maxing all the sliders, and we'll continue to do that, but um, at least this disincentivizes it a little bit, because you can't always get there with the amount of political capital. If it takes too much political capital, you might actually find yourself doing things in steps, and that's pretty cool. That's, that's a good thing, because things usually don't swing as wildly as a full change of the spectrum from one end to the other uh, in politics, as you can imagine. So how are we going to start off? Um, one of the things that's probably good to do in the very beginning is just to reset our cabinet. So we'll go over here to the people. I kind of want to figure out who's good, who's bad. Let's see, so... Uh, 1.8, 1.9, 1.2, she's... or he, he's going. Mr. Christopher White will not be returning to our cabinet. Uh, Chancellor here looks okay. She's got good experience, good, I mean, reasonably good experience and effectiveness. This is... I'm expecting good loyalty, because that's basically the number of uh, political capital that they're giving me, and that's one of the biggest impacts they have. But I want more than that. Oh, okay, you're you're actually quite good, so... Ah, you're actually quite good. So transport, this person doesn't have a particularly... They're not particularly loyal, although they are very, very effective. So, you know, you don't always want to fire people, because if they're, if they're so loyal, I mean, if they're so effective, that means that they're actually helping all the policies in the transport area. So you can see this guy's yellow, but he's making all these things. If I look over here, his effectiveness is 26%, which is quite good. Which means that cost, okay, cost is plus 6%, but effects is minus 17%, implement time is plus 7 Um, I don't know how to read that, actually, so sorry about that. Anyway, let's go look at... No, no, I want to... I still want to shuffle the cabinet, so we're just going to do this. So you, I, okay, there it is. Actually shows the percentages here, which is quite nice. 56, 4, 23, he's not very good. You're, I mean, you're very effective, 26%. Um, effectiveness, 43, 30%. Whoa, what's that? 
her name was shrinking. Um, 1.9, 1.7, 1.72. The thing is, 1.7 is really not that bad. So I, I, I'm of a mind to keep these people. And then just fire only two people. Now the reason why you still want to do reshuffle cabinet is because even though it only is one point to fire them, that'll hurt the loyalty of, of everyone else. So we'll spend the money to reshuffle and then we'll just grab a new economy person for 1.8 or 1.2 or 1.9. So I like the higher numbers, obviously. 1.9 looks good. They have some amount of experience in campaigning, so we'll do this. And then for transport, we will hire... 2.2 is almost certainly going to get it. Oh, we have a 2.1. So, oh, wow, look at this campaigning and experience. The 2.1 might actually win just on merit of being, well, it's slightly less experienced, but the campaigning is so much better. Actually, I don't know what the campaigning does. This affects voters' decision on election day. I don't really, you know what, I honestly don't really care about that. I prefer the political capital. I may, I say that now at least, but you know, come election day, maybe I would prefer it. Now let's get the political capital, which I, I feel like will help us make better decisions to get to a position to better influence the election, um, just by being able to do more things that we think are good. Okay, so what else do we want to do? Uh, my usual first approach is to attack crime, and I usually do that by increasing the police force, like a lot. Um, it's kind of funny that they don't, I don't think they have yet any kind of negative for increasing the police force. I don't know if there's, um, if they've thought about implementing anything, um, just in case you've been living under a rock. We've seen like this uh, aggressive police force, and I'm not sure it's actually an issue with funding the police force, like defunding, I'm not sure that's the solution. It might actually be better training and therefore maybe even, it's just, in my opinion, it's just a underlying currents of racism in the country that are causing those issues. But uh, I'm gonna try my best Despite this being a game which brings up crazy, crazy sensitive issues. We have abortion, you have gender rights, you have, uh, you know, almost anything you can imagine which is a, a sensitive idea. I don't know why this is such an issue, but Darwinism versus <laughs> uh, evolution versus um, uh, creationism was the previous one. It's called something else now, but you have all these potentially sensitive topics and I don't know. I don't think it's that sensitive. That last one, at least, is that sensitive. So I won't really be talking about my viewpoints on them. I won't be adjusting things according to the way I think in real life I would vote for them or want them to happen. I'm just going to go based on the game. I'm just going to min-max, and that kind of absolves me from having to make any kind of moral, ethical, or political statements. So there it is. Um, food standards. So actually what I want most of all right now is, is income because we have a pretty large deficit and I feel like the best way of solving this is actually probably to increase our GDP. So let's go over here. We don't have much money left or political capital I should say. Do we have enough to get both of these? I think so. So let's do the... Let's do the National Business Council first because we want to increase our GDP which... Um, this should help us get more taxes because more people making more money means more taxes for us So it's a it's just a win all around or that's that's my my standpoint Let me also decrease the music a little bit because I'm not sure if it's Maybe just getting a little bit old only to me because I've been playing this game a lot or if it's also getting old to you Okay, there we go and We'll apply this change now when you are first instituting a policy I think this is still the case in this game. You can set it to whatever you want there's no penalty. So you have one free turn after implementing it to set it to whatever you want on the slider. And then from there, every subsequent turn, or which I think is supposed to be three months per turn, um, you'll have a chance to, uh, I mean, when you want to change it after this, you will be able to change it if you want, but it'll cost you political capital to do so again. We're sitting at zero political capital, which means that it looks like we have uh, a chance that somebody's trying to kill me or something. But I'm going to ignore that for now. We're just going to live life on the edge. Or maybe not live life. I don't know if somebody kills me. So the first turn, it was we're off to a good start. Crime is down. Poverty is down. We have some situations we're going to have to handle. This is uh, kind of the game cycle. Every turn at the start, you have... Well, you can actually address it at any point during your turn. But it shows you at the start what your urgent policy is. And I don't know if there's one every single turn, but... There are more often than there aren't. We, for children's food, we can either, you know, kind of 
impose restrictions on what children are eating or we can leave it as the free market or whatever. I'm gonna regulate children's food because I want health to go up. Parents are happy, capitalists are, this is, actually this is a good choice for us because the only thing bad which happened was capitalism going down. Capitalists. So the capitalists don't like us that much, but obesity is an effect that makes it, you know a lot of people unhappy. Parents being made happy is also a good thing. And then of course health. So health and obesity both going in the right direction is a really good thing for us. The fact that basically I try not to worry about um, appealing to individual voters. I usually try to just make the country better and hope that eventually people will like me. And that's how I play this game, but I honestly, I wish that politicians would do it that way too. They probably wouldn't make it to office if they were, but that's still my opinion. So in order to make a little bit more money, we definitely need to make a little bit more money. We've cut the deficit by a lot, but why is this? Is this mostly, yeah, because the global economy in green, blue here, teal, I guess, is going up. Um, relative GDP has gone up a little bit, so that just shows our GDP relative to the world economy. If you just, if you ex extract out the effect of the global economy and just look at our country on its own. So um, it's gone up a little bit, that's a good thing, but mostly it looks like we're benefiting from the global economy. I don't like how this chart, this chart used to be a lot more, I don't know, not legible, but easy to understand. They have these three charts on the bottom. I feel like that every one of these should have its own scale so that you don't have three lines which are completely indistinguishable for each other or at least allow me to check on and off different buttons so that I can just zoom in on the effect down here, which could be gigantic. I mean, I don't know how big the expenditure to income is. You know, we can actually see up here, it's 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 um, 800 to 890. So I wanna be able to see that. I'd like to zoom in on that. Because the debt is two, you know, 25 trillion, uh, you know, 0.8 trillion is just not gonna be much compared to 25 trillion. So it's really hard to see the if, you know little changes of income and expenditure over time when the uh, the graph is weighted on just one huge number. So um, if ever if the if they were all just scaled to some different number like plus 50 percent, well, I mean, you'd want some of them. You'd want income and expenditure to be on the same scale. Otherwise, it wouldn't make sense. But debt doesn't need to be on the same scale. Anyway, um, that's my own feedback. So what? Do, how are we going to make more money? Of course, we can always just continue to pump money into the economy stuff. And wow, 16. Okay, with 16, apparently, you can actually do <laughs> quite a lot of quite a lot of options here. I want ones which are going to make us my okay technology grants i really like this will be unemployment down gdp up capitalist up technology up productivity up religious membership is down that's not bad um this will be 28 billion that's actually pretty expensive i might want to hold off on that one um small business grants this is 30 billion it's another good one because we have gdp up i mean we're effectively if we do something like this short taking short-term losses for long-term gains but Right now we need short-term gains, short gains because we're so negative and I really want to get this debt. If you look at our deficit, um, our expenditure I should say, a hundred billion of it is in debt interest. So we'd essentially actually be already positive in income right now if we didn't have debt. So that's a, a pretty big change and I, I, I feel like it's, it's quite generous in fact, <laughs> the, the uh, interest rate that the US is getting here. Um, Anyway, so what else do we want to do? I, I still think crime is a good one to combat. We didn't do the community. Is this the, no, CCT, CC, TV. I don't know if I like this at all. Well, both crime and violent crime go down, which is good. Antisocial behavior goes down. I'd rather address this with community policing. So let's just fund this a whole lot. And how much is that gonna take? I should probably look, so this is Oh, it's free to raise it. Okay, so the, yeah, we'll raise it all the way. This will decrease alcohol abuse, antisocial behavior, drops unemployment a little bit, decreases racial tension by the crime, crime, and increases the... It's one of those freebies. It's one of those that I just can't see any reason not to completely max it out every game. It doesn't make any sense not to. Um, water cannons, that doesn't... <laughs> they added these. I haven't used water cannons. I haven't seen that before. Um, speed cameras. Makes parents happy. Um, no, we're really looking for here 
Seems to make a lot of people happy. Not too expensive, but I don't want to use political capital on such things yet. Gay marriage, let's see. Well, it makes the religious upset, but youth and liberals are for it and increases liberalism over time. I probably won't change that almost at all because unless I really need to either decrease it to help my religious, what's my religious situation looking like? Well, they're not in red because <laughs> that's parents. Boy, parents are really, really upset. We gotta, okay, so I think we're gonna have to do something like free school meals. It only costs three to raise this all the way. What's the increase in cost? Um, from 4 to 5.8. Now, poverty goes down a whole bunch, socialist health and poor goes up. Parents goes up, but not too much. More parents membership. I suppose that, yeah, their money goes up to by 224. And obesity goes down. Interesting. Oh, okay, because they eat healthy rather than surviving on pure junk food. Okay, so I like this a lot. Let's apply this. It only takes three political capital. I know we don't really have that much. One of the things I want to save up for is actually to do the petrol tax. And it's going to take me 22 to get to where I want. So we have 13 right now, and we're gaining, what, a turn? 16, okay. So I'm at 29, and I needed 22, so we can do 7. We can only get away with doing 7, and I better get away with only doing 6, just to make sure I have a little bit left over. Don't think we're going to adjust the postal service. Selective schooling, what? Um, but it's all be educated in the same classroom regardless of ability, or it was desirable to place the most talented students in their own classes. Oh, interesting. That's quite interesting. I'll stay neutral on that. Science funding, I, I really, really, really like this. I mean, I think that oh, it's quite expensive, though. It brings our technology up, GDP up, energy efficiency, state employ. I mean, it's good in so many different ways. Unfortunately, it's also... Wait. Is it seven? Okay. I know this is extremely expensive, but look how hugely it impacts GDP. I'm just going to go with it. I'm going to make a, a gut decision that hopefully that's the right move. Oh, this is 6 and not 7. I needed 7, didn't I? We'll find out. So if I have enough, 22 is what I'm looking for. Okay, crime is down, poverty is down, health is up, and we have uh, we're actually now benefiting from technological advantage. So there are these little status effects that once a certain combination of things weighted together increases over some threshold. Um, a new effect goes in, which this actually further increases our GDP and our productivity. So space program is going to help this help us keep it. I would like to increase that as well. And we also have a chance to do. Okay, this is also um, a... so as our GDP grows, labor laws are down, or labor laws detract from it. Payroll tax increases it, technology and unemployment. Okay, so we need to try to get rid of unemployment. That's that's a great thing to try to get rid of. Um, budget deficit, oh, is actually increased. I think that's mostly because, yeah, that's mostly because it looks like the global economy took a dip. I don't see much growth or change in the relative GDP. Excuse me, Rufus, let me just move my microphone so that it's maybe a little bit more centered. Uh, yeah, okay, so, we also put into place a lot of policies, which it may take more than just one turn to pay dividends. So, can't expect everything to happen just overnight. Now that said, unemployment, where is my unemployment? Um, no, I don't actually know where it is. Let me just find something which should affect unemployment. Like this will affect unemployment. There it is. Got it. Oh my god, that's gonna be, let's just click on this. It'll be way too hard to parse just by arrows. Okay, so agricultural subsidies will decrease this. So we'll, ah, so we'll arm police. Okay, interesting. Art subsidies will, but not by much. Let's actually sort by strength. Okay, military spending has the biggest impact on unemployment. The next is state schools, then telecom, then private healthcare. Actually, this is something which we don't control directly. We just control public healthcare and then Private healthcare takes over the rest, right? So it fills the gaps. That's the capitalist theory. Um, energy industry, water industry, rail, agriculture. So space program also does this road building. Armed police, there it is. Police force. Science funding, okay, so we did that. State, state health service. Community policing. We've done a lot of these. We've actually already 
kind of tackled a lot of the unemployment issues and we do see a slightly negative trend which is good we want unemployment to go down the question is military spending i think has already started maxed in this game um state schools this might be the first one we try to approach what about energy industry okay so energy industry interestingly goes down when gdp goes up or i should say goes up when gdp goes down GDP has, or does GDP growing have a negative effect on an energy industry? I guess so. Uh, huh. This is the only way I know we can affect it, is by subsidizing clean energy. Now this gets rid of, lowers loyal demand. How much does it cost to do something like this? It only costs one to raise this. Energy industry goes up, CO2 emissions go down, oil demand goes down, environment goes up, capitalists don't like it, environmentalists like it. Let's revert that for now because I, I want to make sure that we're not pissing off everyone. Although the environmentalists are not terribly unhappy. Um, okay, pollution, this is another one we'd like to get rid of. Um, this is a lot easier to parse. Actually, I know what's going to help us on that, and that's going to be my petrol tax. Can we do my petrol? I am one point short. Okay, so let's just make sure that we get at least seven left over this time so that we can institute the petrol tax because that will be nice for um, decreasing the pollution. I mean, it's going to make us a little bit more money, which we could use. The deficit is not decreasing, it's only increasing, and that's kind of a big focus of mine. I actually think that this is a really good thing for us to do art subsidies. It'll lower unemployment. just kind of makes everyone happy except for the capitalists, but sometimes the capitalists just need to just need to eat it. Just, I'm sorry, I'm gonna make you happy in, your, in other ways. Speaking of, I can go over here and try to make them happy. <laughs> Helicopter money. I, I don't know what this means. An unusual policy, oh, I, I see, this is a, a term, not money for helicopters. <laughs> okay, um, an unusual policy designed to boost economy immediately where the government effectively prints free money and hands it directly to citizens for them to spend. Normally the amount is fixed and can be withheld from those on high incomes. Like all money printing, it is inflationary. Interesting. So it does increase inflation, yeah. So we are definitely not gonna do that. I don't think that's gonna have a, a good effect long term. So this is good to get capitalists to help us out with capitalists. And I think socialists like us right now. Where are the socialists? There they are. Yeah, socialists really like us right now, but capitalists are kind of having a harder time and I, I gotta be honest, as soon as we increase that tax, I know the capitalists are not gonna like us. So we're gonna start prepping for that by just um, trying to make them a little bit more happy. In fact, I'm gonna do this, but then I'm also gonna go over to the taxes. So when we see anything with the cost in the millions, you know, that's only fractions of one billion. And with the numbers all in the billions, it's not that, I, I don't know, I basically don't sweat the small stuff. So hopefully this has a better impact on everything than it does on, like, that. I, I feel like the, it's worth whatever the cost is. Because we don't want to increase costs right now, but I feel like that one is worth it. Family planning. Disability. I, I mean, I honestly, I want to cut some things. Genital mutilation ban? It's crazy. I mean, I'd really like to cut some things, but this is quite expensive. And one of the things I usually cut is pensions, which... I know that uh, doesn't make me a very popular person. Um, we probably won't do it right now, but you can see the reason why. 127. If we were to cut these down... Yeah. Now note that there is just a small little graphical glitch. I'm at... Whatever. It says 8, 16, 31. So if I revert, it takes 8 to do this. Now it takes 16 to do this. But what you can see is... You see the 6 is actually below the blue box. It's below the 1 instead of next to it. Just kind of a bug. And then... Uh, the three one is actually that way too, but normally if it's twenty, oh, there's no twenty. Um, if it's a, uh, if it doesn't have a one in it, it doesn't seem to have that problem. Kind of a goofy little thing, but I, I even expect that that might be patched out by the time you can play it. All right. Well, we already set science funding as high as it can be. Technological grants would be something we could do. Recycling we could change. I do like. Okay. Well, let's look at nuclear fission. This increases CO two emissions. Oh, I see. It's right now we're at decommission at end of life, which means that we're we're not trying to push nuclear fission further. But I kind of 
think that technology is good. Environmentalists, we're already making them extremely happy. This increases GDP, it decreases oil demand. I don't think that it should increase CO2 emissions. Yeah, it says dramatically reduces, so... I see, it's going away. So when it's the darker green, that means it's actually void. How much would this cost? Generous subsidies, 16 billion. I mean, this will increase GDP. It will do like a lot of good things. The only negative thing it really does is annoy the environmentalists. Now I can't do it though, because I only have 16. So we have to make sure we have at least seven in the bank this time. And I'd rather be eight. So let's just choose something which is eight or less. Let's look at welfare. Um, alcohol awareness, this is not bad. Maybe something which is a little more popular. I'm not very popular right now. Okay. Small business grants, this would be good. GDP, socialism, trade unionist membership, but that's okay. Self-employed, people like it. Capitalists like it. Okay, this takes 10. Dang it. Nope, not, I don't have enough. So let's just look for technology grants. I'd really like to do this one. I think this is important, but again, no money for it yet. Workers on board, 12. Yeah, so... Oh, we can do young entrepreneurs. Okay. We'll do this. Doesn't cost that much money, and... I don't know, maybe it won't be that effective, but then maybe it will. Fracking. This bill will give us the go-ahead, if we do the allow, or ban it. Well, I can expect that it's going to have a negative on the environment, but a positive on GDP. I'm going to allow it. Again, not, not really a reflection... Or this, nothing I'm expecting here, or I'm at least, my disclaimer is nothing is a reflection of my personal beliefs, but... Although, what's my personal, I mean, <laughs> despite saying I'm not going to go into it, fracking. I mean, I don't know. I don't actually know if I have a very well-informed opinion. I may have an opinion, but it may not be well-informed enough to share. So, we'll hit next turn, and I know what I want to do. I want to quickly... Before I forget... Okay, GDP is up, unemployment is down, crime is down. So everything is going in the right direction for us. Except for deficit, which still eludes us. And there's been a deadly virus outbreak. Welcome to reality. Thanks, game. That's exactly what I needed to see. So this has been a nice first look at the game. Um, I'll, before I do anything, I'm going to increase this to 22. And that's going to only increase our income. What is that? <laughs> that's only going to give us like 15 million. Uh, that's not as much as I was hoping. One tick back. Good. All right, well, we'll still apply this. I've waited all this time to do my petrol tax. I mean, I, I ought to show you what's going on there. We're going to decrease car usage. Motors will be a little upset, but environmentalists won't be. GDP is affected by a minuscule amount. It's actually minus 0%, so it still really didn't have an effect. Motors income goes down because they're paying tax, obviously, but motors membership will go down even more. Farmers dislike this a little bit, but electric car transition goes up, so I think that's overall positive, and hey, it's more money in our pockets, which is quite a good thing. Anyway, it's been 28 minutes in this video, so I think it's time to wrap it up. Um, I don't think I don't know if this will be a full series. I expect that it, it could be. I'll just try to blow through my term very quickly. But otherwise, this is mainly meant as a, a first look at Early Access Democracy 4. If you liked the video, maybe just press the like button. I usually don't ask that, but oh my god, my popularity. Hopefully it's better, you know, the likes ratio is better than this. Um, and otherwise, I'll catch you back for the next episode. Until then, stay safe and take care.